Thank you for watching the recording of the 71st Annual Meeting of Dickey Rail Telephone Cooperative. The meeting was called to order at 6 p.m. on Thursday, October 21st by the board president. Next, those in attendance recited the Pledge of Allegiance and an invocation was read. DRN CEO and General Manager introduced the special guests as follows. Justin, are you in the room? Oh, there he is. Troy Schilling and Michelle Michelle Schilling, his wife. Troy is the CEO, general manager with uh, West River Telephone out of Hazen, North Dakota. And their son, Matthew, um, works for us in, out of the Lisbon office. So Troy and Michelle, would you please stand up? Jeff Olson, the past Red River Telecommunica Telecommunications general manager and a hunting buddy of mine, Jeff, he's retired. There you go, Jeff. And then Tom Steinelson, he's the Red River and general manager of Red River Current. So thanks, Tom, for coming. That's the, the special guest. I appreciate everybody for coming. I will call upon Arden Falk, Dickey Rowe Telephone Communications, or Cooperative Secretary Treasurer to read the meeting notice and give the number of members present for a proof of quorum. Good evening. Please take notice pursuant to the bylaws of the cooperative, the 71st annual meeting of the members will be held at the Ellendale Public School Gymnasium, Ellendale, North Dakota, in the city of Ellendale, in the county of Dickey, state of North Dakota, on the 21st day of October, 2021, at 6 p.m. for the following purposes. To elect three directors from District 3, 4, and 10, the names listed below are the names that were nominated by the nominating committee on August 25th, 2021. District 3, Fort Ransom, Catherine and Verona exchanges, Arden Falk, Fort Ransom. District 4, Ferdonia and Judd exchanges, Sydney Meidinger, Ferdonia. District 10, <clears throat> Ashley, Edgley, Ellendale, Cullum and Lamore exchange, Dan Gerard, Ellendale. Nominations by petition, none. Two, to present and consider the reports of the officers, directors and committees, and three, to transact such business as may properly come before the members at this time. I'm pleased to report there are 183 members and 163 guests present, and a quorum has been established. The quorum was a 167. Thank you. Members, is there anyone out there who would like the minutes from last year's meeting read? The minutes are found on page one of your annual report. Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to accept the 2019 annual meeting minutes as printed in the, okay. The motion, is there a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. DRN is proud to be a cooperative and October is cooperative month. In North Dakota, cooperatives are impact players. In our state, cooperatives directly employ more than 10,000 people and generate more than $6 billion in total economic activity annually. Our cooperative board of directors consists of nine members who meet monthly to conduct business. Your cooperative's membership role has approximately 8,200 members from a 5,000 square mile service territory. The following people represent you, the members. I'm Ralph Nye, President, representing District 7, consists of the Nelvik and Venturi Exchange, and my wife, Deborah. Ralph Greer, Dickey Rural's Vice President, represents District 2, comprised of Dickey, Litchville, and Mary Exchange, and his wife, Rita. Wave, Rita. There we go, thank you. Arden Falk, Dickey Rural Telephone Cooperative Secretary Treasurer, representing District 3, comprised of Catherine, Verona, and Fort Ransom Exchange. Sid Meininger, Fredonia, representing District 4, Fredonia and Judd Exchange, and his wife Sandra. Myron Iago from Milner, representing District 6, the Milner and Creed Exchange, and his wife Lori. 
Paul Olson from Forbes, District 8, representing the Forbes and Maricourt Exchange, and his wife, Deanna. Bruno Kinsler, Fullerton, District 9, the Fullerton and Guelph Exchange, and his wife, Deb. Hi, Deb. Dan Gerard from Ellendale, District 10, representing Ashley, Colm, Hedgley, Ellendale, and Lamore Exchange. Rod Buck from Oaks, representing District 11, the Oaks, Foreman, Gwinner, and Lisbon Exchange, and his wife, Linda. Fallon Kelly, his DRN's attorney from Jones and Kelly Attorney at Law in Lisbon, and Ken Shimpke from Ellendale, DRN's CEO, General Manager, and his wife, Andy. Again, welcome to the 71st Annual Meeting of Dickey Real Telephone Cooperative. Your board of directors and staff are glad you joined us tonight as we report to you, our members, the steps we have taken and continue to take to build your cooperative for the future. This year, we have continued our investment in the infrastructure within the cooperative. Over $4 million was spent to make improvements in our fiber optic infrastructure. DRN upgraded its network to provide 10 gig internet service. We upgraded our equipment and network to increase our network capacity with the network's capability to support new services you, our members, are increasingly demanding. With the deployment of a 10 gig service, we are future-proofing our network and allowing our members to enjoy seamless video streaming, online gaming, and a full range of bandwidth intensive services. October is a co-op month, and we are working together with other cooperatives to continue education on the benefits of being a cooperative member. Three of the seven cooperatives principal guidelines by which cooperatives put their value into practice are education, training, and information, cooperation among cooperatives, and concern for the community. DRN ReadyTech is proud to support continuing education and rewards the hard work of area high school graduates. In 2020, we awarded 23 scholarships in the amount of $500 each to two high school graduates in each school within our service territory. The winners are listed on page five of your, 15 of your annual report. Congratulations to all the scholarship winners. We also provide training for young individuals through our internship program. This past summer, we had six interns learning from our employees in their respective area of study. In addition to this, our employees are providing cybersecurity training to students and businesses. We are working with other cooperatives this month to help spread the awareness of cooperatives during co-op month and we show concern for our communities by making a difference through donations to various nonprofit organizations and by staff volunteering. Our motto is making a difference in the communities we serve. Financially, DRN continues to grow its assets and its success is evident by its financial statements. With net margins of just over nine million, this allowed your board to approve capital credit payouts of $3 million. The accounting department issued payments, of 8, 000, issued payments to 8,586 member accounts with the average payout of $349.41. Our investment in North Dakota Long Distance and Dakota Carrier Network continue to be a good investment of your money, as DRN received $639,000 in dividends in 2020. Because of the strong financial position of your cooperative, the board was also able to provide all members with a free month of internet and phone service in April of 2020. Your board of directors is constantly looking for ways to invest, whether it be through plant upgrades, investments in partnerships like DCN or expansion in underserved areas of North Dakota. Thank you to Kent for his leadership and to our employees of DRN ReadyTech for your hard work this past year. And I would like to thank you, our members, for your loyalty, cooperation, and business. Together, we are working to make DRN the best technology cooperative in the region and making a difference in the communities we serve. Next, we'll have a report from our manager, Kent Shemke. Hey, Ralph. Hello, all again. Welcome to our annual meeting. Thank you for your attendance, patronage, and support of the cooperative. 
Over the past 71 years, DRN has worked tirelessly to provide its members with state-of-the-art telecommunications. As we strive to adhere to our mission statement, your board and staff will continue to provide you with stellar service while being respectful, accountable, and dedicated. We will keep building our network and services for the future. Your cooperative has transitioned from a telephone cooperative to a broadband or internet cooperative. And as more and more members are using mobile apps to make their lives easier and more efficient, we saw the need to assist our members with their internet experience. So we launched the DRN ReadyTech Wi-Fi app. With this app, users can manage their networks, see connected devices, set parental controls, and more. Please visit our website to learn more about this great tool. Over the, <clears throat> over the past several years, there has been a strong initiative from the government to de decrease the digital divide in the rural areas. Since our service territory is 100% fiber fed and connected, DRN did its due diligence, reviewed maps of areas where internet connectivity and fiber optics are lacking, and we headed east. To aid in revenue diversification, we created a plan to bring fi a fiber optic network to the cities of Castleton, Mapleton, and Horace. The first order of business was the purchasing of fiber optic cable, securing an underground construction subcontracted company to plow the fiber route and then, and then the purchase and renovation of an old Dairy Queen building in, in Castleton. This houses a central office which includes the equipment to provide high-speed internet service to the residents of Castleton and Mapleton. The construction team began work in July with hopes of connecting customers by the end of the year. However, the timeline to turn up was delayed primarily because of material shortages and availability due to plant closures and border closures that brought risks to the plans that, that were unforeseen to us. Despite all the setbacks, DRN and its vendors and suppliers pushed on to bring the residents of Castleton a superior internet service. Construction continues in the communities of Castleton, Mapleton, and Horace. The central office in Horace is currently under construction with a completion goal of the summer of 2022. Because of DRN's strong financial position, the board of directors are looking for ways to diversify our portfolio and to gain new revenue streams. DRN, as the parent company, has the following subsidiaries. ReadyTech, a managed IT company. ReadyTech Fiber, which provides the fiber optics and the broadband to Castleton, Mapleton, and Horace. And at the end of 2020, began the process of creating ReadyTech Engineering. This division specializes in a wide array of telecommunications and networking engineering services, and it's based out of Bismarck, North Dakota. We want to thank all the employees of DRN for their commitment to serve the needs of our cooperative members, their willingness to expand their knowledge base and streamline processes to gain efficiencies is key to a solid future. I'm gonna have Ralph Nye come up and we're gonna announce the following employees that have service awards. Uh, please come forward. Uh, Gordon, 25 years of service. Gordon Vandemetter and Lori Kingsley. <laughs> Lori Kingsley, 25 years also. <laughs> These are 20 year awards. Pamela Henningsen. Travis Anlacker, 20 years also. <laughs> 15 year awards, Charles Kingsett. <laughs> Tyson Johnson. Brent Greenight. <laughs> Ten year award, Andrew Meyer. <laughs> and 
won five year award, Donna Mosley. We thank you all. I'd like to thank, a big thank you to all our employees and board members for the commitment to DRN and exceptional customer service to our members. Thank you for your continued support of the cooperative. I look forward to updating you next year on our fiber eastbound project and how we are making a difference in our communities. Would any of our members like to have the Secretary of Treasurer's report read? The report is found on page four of your annual report. Hearing none, would someone make a motion to approve the report as printed? There's a motion, is there a second? Second, thank you. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries, reports approved. Uh, Troy Rademacher, DRN's business and accounting manager will now give the financial report. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to review with you the financial information provided to you on pages six through nine of your 2020 annual report. The information provided on these pages has been audited by Moss Adams LLP and presents in fairly all material aspects the financial position of Dickey Rural Telephone Cooperative and its subsidiaries. Dickey Rural Telephone Cooperative was given an unqualified opinion by Moss Adams, which is the highest level of opinion that can be given to a company being audited. Starting on page six of the consolidated balance sheet, you'll see an increase of over 10.7 million in property, plant, and equipment. 4.9 million in upgrades were completed in DRN's cooperative service territory with an additional 5.8 million being associated with our expansion to Castleton. Over on page seven, you'll notice that an amount under current maturities and long-term debt is at zero in 2020. This is because we paid off our final loan payment to RUS and no longer carry any further loan indebtedness going forward. On page eight, you'll see DRN's operating revenues increased 319,000 over 2019. Some of our biggest gains in revenue have come from increases in internet, managed services, and security. DRN's growth in revenues are larger than they look because the board of directors approved a free month of telephone and internet service in the month of April, which saved members $525,000 and is not represented on the income statement. Operating expenses were up almost 1.8 million over 2019. Items that caused this increase came from measures to further secure our network from the threat of cyber attacks, which are growing each day. With increased revenues in managed services and security, that also represents more purchases and equipment that we have to do on behalf of our customers, which raises our expenses. In 2020, we also started the exciting process of being able to provide services to Castleton, which led to increased expenses as well. Under other income, you'll notice an increase of 484,000 in dividends and interest. This gain is attributed to larger dividends and in our investments in our Verizon RSA3 and US Connect. As you can see, your cooperative had a very positive and successful year. We look forward to serving you in the future and thank you for your continued support. Okay, I, seeing none, I will call upon Fallon Kelly to conduct the election of officers. Hello everyone. Let the minutes reflect this is the time and place for election of board members for districts three, four, and 10. The nominating committee has submitted the minutes of its meeting and the nominating committee has made the following nominations. Arden Falk for District 3, Sid Meidinger for District 4, and Dan Gerard for District 10. Under Article 4.4 of the Cooperative Bylaws, nominations from the floor are not permitted. Under Article 4.5, when there is only one nominee for a director, the election may be by unanimous acclamation. 
Under that same Article 4.5 of the bylaws, a nominee from each district receiving the highest number of votes of all nominees from that district shall be elected. Under Article 4.5 again of the bylaws, voting for each directorship shall be limited to members from the territorial region from which a director is to be elected. No member may vote in more than one region. For districts three, four, and 10, there was only one nomination for each district, as previously reported by uh, uh, Board of Director Arden Falk. Therefore, I will ask for elections by unanimous consent for each of those districts. So first we'll turn to District 3. Arden Falk has been nominating, nominated I'm sorry, by the nominating committee. District 3 is in Region 1, and so members from Districts 2 and 3 may vote for this District 3 election. As I stated before, since there are no nominations by written um, petition, uh, other nominations other than Arden Falk under written petition under section 4.4 of the bylaws, nominations for District 3 are automatically closed at this time. Is there a motion for election of Arden Falk by unanimous acclamation for District 3? This motion, is there a second? It's a second. All in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed? Congratulations. And it's uh, a plurality vote, so whoever gets the most votes, and there's only one person up for election. So uh, even, even though not everybody spoke, congratulations. <laughs> for District 4, Sid Meininger has been nominated by the na nominating committee. District 4 is in Region 2, and so members from Districts 4, 6, and 7 may vote for this District 4 election. Just as was the case for Arden Falk, there are no other nominations by written petition, and so under Section 4.4 of the bylaws, nominations for District 4 are automatically closed. Is there a motion for election of Sid Meininger by unanimous acclamation for District 4? Whose motion is there a second? There's a second. All in favor, say aye. Opposed? Congratulations. Moving on to District 10, Jan Gerard is the current uh, director for uh, District 10. He's also been nominated by the nominating committee. District 10 is in Region 4, and so members from Districts 10 and 11 may vote for this District 10 election. Again, since there are no other nominations, uh, by written petition under Section 4.4 of the bylaws, nominations are automatically closed. Is there a motion for election of Dan Gerard by unanimous acclamation for District 10? There's a motion, is there a second? There's a second. All in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Congratulations, thank you. I would now entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Okay, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Please remain seated, we have a whole bunch of door prizes to hand out. I think Janelle will take care of that. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>